Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of statistics, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and an enormous selection of players and stat options are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million football fans who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash get100 and use code GET100. That's code GET100 at prizepicks.com slash get100 for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. You are listening to the Hiking Radio Network, where we talk the walk with shows by hikers about hikers for everybody. I'm wondering if you'd go wandering with me through the wilderness and woods to where the winds are blowing free through the darkness of the night heading toward the morning. Welcome to the Jester Section Hiker Podcast with the spotlight on section hikers. And I'll spread the word and you beat the drum. We'll round up the truth. And get the gang to come And we'll leave the streets And these neighborhoods Head over the river And through the woods Welcome to the Jester Section Hiker Podcast, which is part of the Hiking Radio Network of Shows, and I'm your host, Julie Jester Gayhart. Austin Wallace is back with me this week to basically pick up where we left off from his first time on the podcast back in episode number 77. We left off with Austin going for a shakedown hike on segment number four of the Mountains to Sea Trail to make sure he was ready to go for his grand adventure on the John Muir Trail. We both wished each other well and said we would catch up once we were both back from our hikes out on the JMT. Well, you all know how my journey on the JMT turned out, but Austin has a different and amazing outcome. But first, we hear about his shakedown hike on the MST. All right, Austin, welcome back to the podcast. Great to be back. (laughs) Okay, so this is going to be the episode where we pick up where we left off. So (laughs) that's the only way I can think to start this. So Austin was on with me, um, I don't know, beginning, end of June, beginning of July, something like that. It Sounds was episode right. Number, yeah, episode number 77. And both of us were off on this grand adventure to the John Muir Trail. And we'll get into that in a second. But I want to talk about, you also mentioned, um, as we were, you know, wishing each other well, that you were going to do a shakedown hike on segment four of the Mountains of Sea Trail. So I want to talk about that first. Okay. And then we'll get into the John Muir Trail. Everybody knows what happened to be on the John Muir Trail. I mean, so, I mean, there's nothing else to tell, maybe Austin's side of it, but uh, we will get into your wonderful adventure. But let's start off on this um, segment four. So tell us a little bit about, I guess, how many miles is segment four? And did you guys go east or west? So we went uh, east. So we started at Black Mountain Campground and headed east to Beacon Heights. So it's like 76 and some change. Um, and then we did it over six days and, uh, looking back on it, I don't think we could have picked a better section to do a shakedown trip for the JMT. And then, uh, I could go there yeah. a lot of ways. Uh, so when you did that segment, okay. So when you were preppy, this is your shakedown hike. Mm-hmm. Uh, segment four is known to be one of the hardest segments in the mountains on um, the mountains of sea trail. Pretty much. I would agree with that. <laughs> <It's> and <laughs> one of the most beautiful, and we're going to get into that. So real quickly, before we get into the thick of things here. So you were testing shakedown hike to be means you're testing your gear you're, you know, taking everything that you're going to take on the yep. JMT. Yep. So did that include bear canister, all the weight in your pack, 
and, you know, the clothes you were going to wear. So talk to us about that. Yeah. Uh, essentially everything but my shoes. I, and we can talk about that here in a second. But for the 99.9% uh, .9 of what I carried on segment four was what I was planning on carrying for JMT. And that included socks, underwear, shirt, hat, buff, everything. Because uh, I wanted to know how things were going to work. Uh, one of the things we learned um, with the bear canister was that uh, it's difficult for me for the amount of food that I eat on a regular basis to fit six days of food into that bear canister. I had the BV 500 like you did. Yeah. I think everybody knows I hate that thing. Now. <laughs> I'm, just... <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not exactly a big fan myself, but unfortunately it was a necessary evil. Yes, uh, indeed. But, um, but yeah, so the, we wanted to know one, would six days of food uh, fit in there and would we, you know, would we still be hungry if we, you know, had to cut stuff down? Um, but yeah, tents, uh, bear can, shoes, uh, everything that we that we were planning on bringing for the JMT was what what came on the MST hike. And, I mean, uh, same pack, everything, right? Yeah. As, and, and like for me, being a, um, you know, with the cameras and batteries and everything like that, I wanted to make sure that I had, you know, enough battery power, enough digital storage, all that fun stuff. Um, I tried out a, uh, call it like the Swiss army knife for, uh, SD cards for uh, the memory cards for the cameras and, um, learned a very hard lesson that I need to be gentle with SD cards. Uh, cause I ended up, um, breaking one of my, uh, mini SD cards that I used for the GoPro, uh, on Lin or, uh, the morning that we were leaving Linville Gorge. And so I lost three days of footage and it oh, was just no. like, I was just like, Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I don't uh, even know why I'm laughing. Cause that's not funny, but <laughs> you can, I, I can laugh about it now, but I was not laughing about it then. I was so upset with myself. Um, but yeah, those are lessons learned though. Lessons learned. So you start off with all this gear and it's had to, what, what did your pack weigh? Ugh. So to, here, here's me being honest. I don't know. And the reason I don't know is because I didn't want to know. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I think it was probably the plus side of 35 with water and everything like that. Um, yeah. But I, 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 a long time ago, I felt myself going down the rabbit hole of stressing about base weight and counting ounces and stuff like that. And the realization that I came to was that I'm going to pay attention to how, how much stuff weighs, but at the end of the day, I'm going to, I'm going to choose light stuff and then I'm just going to put it in the pack and I'm going to go, I'm not going to stress about, Oh, I need to have a 15 pound base weight or, um, or whatever. And, uh, so I don't know exactly. And, and I go out of my way not to weigh stuff. Um, I'll pick it up. And, and I'll... believe me, when you hike the JMT, you don't want to know. <laughs> oh, yeah. So funny story J uh, about JMT. So the only time I weighed my pack on the JMT was when we were leaving um, Independence, uh, the Mount Williamson Hotel, uh, and that we were going to finish our last stint to go uh, to Whitney Portal. And they had it there. And I guess it was like their thing where, you know, every, they take everybody's picture with their pack weight and everything. And I was like, I don't really want to know. And uh, so I threw it up there and it was like 36. So I was like, all right, that's that's all right. And so that was with, you know, two liters of water and all my batteries and um, however many days of food that was, four days of food. So I was like, OK, that's that's not horrible. That's not bad. Actually, that's not bad. No, that's not no, bad. I was so, well, OK, we're going to say you have for segment four on your shakedown hike, a 35 pound pack. I'll give you a pound. Yeah. So we'll <laughs> Yeah. That sounds good. So <laughs> you start off on segment four. Did you have any, you know, expectations on this hike? Did you, you know, certain things that you wanted to figure out or what I learned from you from watching your video on YouTube about segment four, Austin, you're an emotional guy. <laughs> deep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like seriously. And I like, I mean, I found myself, you know, when you were describing and, you know, showing us the Linville Gorge area, which I mean, absolutely beautiful right? in that segment. Um, I mean, I was like, wow, Austin is an emotional guy. 
Well, that's why I'm out, I'm out in my element there. I mean, that's that's my happy place. So it's very easy for me to to let that emotion flow uh, when we're out there. The uh, but I like to when I film, I like to film everything. Sometimes that's good and bad. But uh, you're talking about the video. I talk about like rainbows and unicorns, and you know it's very easy to look at Instagram or watch watch YouTube and whatnot. And and everybody likes to put up you know, when they're doing great and they're smiling and it's this beautiful view. Um, but it's not all rainbows and unicorns, as you know, it's, uh, no. it's hard sometimes. And, uh, so I like to, I like to have the, the good emotion and the, eh, it's still good emotion, but you know, it's showing that it's not always just like I said, rainbows and unicorns. Sometimes it's hard. So I like to, no, I yeah, think you guys were climbing, the, uh, yeah, the pinnacle or I can't, it was it the pinnacle yeah, or so, something. So One of the first days. Yeah, we did. Uh, we hiked up the first day from Black Mountain up to Woods Mountain on Rough Rough Ridge or something like that. The name just flew out of my head. But um, it was some really tough hiking. Uh, and we were it didn't help that we had an extra water carry because there wasn't any water for like the next 10 miles or something. And so we had twice as much water as we normally would. So our packs are a lot heavier. and. Uh, it got to the point where my brother and I, it pains me to say it, but he's a much better hiker than I am. And uh, so we'd be going up these hills and it's just these super steep ascents. And uh, we, I, I would literally take like 20 steps and, and have to stop again. And it wasn't because of the elevation, it was just because I was just like. <gasps> that sounds like you were on my method. <laughs> it, was, it was rough. It was super tough. Um, and this was what yeah. day two? Day, this was day one. I was like, man, oh, if day whole, one. If the okay. whole segment's like this, it's gonna be a rough six days. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but the uh, the MST guy talks. Uh, you're talking about it being one of the toughest, but one of the most beautiful segments. Uh, it was kind of a running joke with uh, my brother and I because the the MST guy calls it rugged and spectacular, and I was like, this is definitely rugged and it's definitely spectacular. <laughs> so. So were there any like surprises, you know, I, I guess since you read in the MST mm -hmm. um, descriptions that, you know, rugged and spectacular, but what surprises did you have out there? Uh, well, the first surprise has nothing to do with the MST guide. Um, it was a, a new friend that we made, uh, Mark Thompson. Uh, we had started conversing on Instagram of all things and never met Mark before, but he had just seen some of my stuff. I'd seen some of his stuff and uh, he lives out in that area. And he's like, well, if, you know, if you're ever out here, just let me know. I can help with shuttle and everything. And I was like, so when we first were thinking about the trip, I, I reached out to Mark and he's like, oh yeah, sure. Blah, blah, blah. And so I'm in the back of my head and I was like, well, just invite him to come along with us. You know, if he wants to come along, he seems like a hiker. And I was like, if he's an ax murderer, then at least I get to die doing something that Did I love. <laughs> <laughs> but uh and, and hopefully someone will find your footage right right yeah yeah or you know or mark can steal it whatever but uh <laughs> but it turned out to be a, a fantastic surprise because not only uh was mark going above and beyond as far as shuttling us he was a trail angel and brought us out you know food and drinks and that kind of stuff when he met us um but he turned out to be a really great hiking partner too um you know, you never really can tell how you're going to jive with people, especially people that you've never met. Yeah. And, and uh, you and your brother, I mean, you guys are used to hiking together. You got a rhythm. Yeah, yeah. You know how each other are. Yeah. And uh, it just kind of it really worked out. And uh, I still talk to Mark and and um, he put up with us. And, and Mark even gave me my trail name, uh, which is my first trail name ever. Um, but, uh, but yeah, well, so hopefully it's your only one, Austin, because when somebody gives you a trail name, you like, keep it right. <laughs> well, well, when, when, when you hear what the name is, maybe you'll understand why I'm not like, if something else came along, it wouldn't break my heart. Well, now you have to tell us what it is. Downwind. Because okay. Th th there's only one thing that's <laughs> downwind. Okay. <There's> a <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I wouldn't keep it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I try. So I don't know how far down. The I don't know. Goes. We have a podcaster on the network. Her name is Mudbutt. So <laughs> that might yeah. be worse. That might be worse. <laughs> yeah. Mudbutt and me downwind. <laughs> 
Do I even have to ask how you got or who gave it to you? I should ask Mark. because Mark gave it to the, me. Oh, Mark gave it. Okay. So he's the one that was downwind, right? Or he needed you to go downwind. So it happened. I'm trying to remember exactly what night it was, but we were, I was eating some protein or something like that. I was chilly. That was right. Cause one of my favorite uh, dehydrated milk. Okay. That's what you don't bring on the trail. Come yeah. on. Well, Come on. that, well, so, so we, we learned, right. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, so, uh, and then I had like a spicy Thai tuna uh, one night for, for, ew. for dinner. And so but he's like, that is disgusting. Yeah. And, and so Mark's like, <laughs> man, he's like looking at what I was eating. He's like, man, I do not want to be downwind of you. And he's like, that's it. Downwind. That's your trail now. Like, <laughs> but, uh, but anyways, yeah. So he gave me my first. So did you name. go by that on the J of T? Uh, I did not, but my brother ensured that I did. Okay. Um, <laughs> so he was not going to let it die. And uh, the we met. Well, this folks. segment four so far has taught you a lot of lessons. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> like spicy Thai tuna. Not a good idea. <laughs> so, okay. So you got to try out your food. Yep. Tried the food. You know, your pack. We know it's heavy. You know, a little bit on the heavier side. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, 35, 30. It's not that bad when you're going on the JMT and you have no, a that's, two. That's, I call it the 2.9 ounce bear canister. You might as well just say it's three. Um, so that's a great surprise. You guys met a new friend to hike oh. with. That's awesome. Shout out to Mark and uh, shout out to uh, him naming you. So let's get into this uh, spectacular part yeah. of um, segment four. And I will say for those that are not familiar a lot of people are familiar that listen to the podcast with the Appalachian Trail side of North Carolina. But I'm telling you guys right now, the North Carolina Mountains to Sea Trail side of North Carolina, hands down, wins. I'm sorry. People are going to get mad at me. But between like the Grandfather Mountain area, the Lynn Cove Viaduct, the uh, Linville Gorge, I mean, you can't beat it. You know, somebody's going to put, you know, the Rhone's up against it or something like that, but hands down, Linville Gorge. So is this the first time you've been to the gorge? Yeah, it was my first okay. time. All so, right. So tell us about it. Well, the, uh, I was, it was definitely a highlight, um, planning wise, because you look at it on the elevation profile and it's this steep, steep drop. Then you go across the Linville river and then it's a steep, steep climb up to uh short off mountain. And, uh, so I was, excited but nervous uh, all in the same breath because I I knew I knew that it was a huge destination for people very popular uh, it was one of the reasons we went early in the season and on a weekday because I wanted to avoid a lot of the crowds and they call the Linville Gorge the Grand Canyon of the East that'll give some yeah. people a, a visual yeah so visualize the Grand Canyon of the East it's just got a lot of greenery on it when it's not winter time. But yeah, absolutely beautiful. And the the thing that the so Mark, uh, it, it was great to have Mark along because uh, he was very familiar with the area. And so we had originally planned to, to camp on uh, Short Off Mountain, which is essentially at one of the southern uh, edges of the gorge and then hike the rest of the gorge the next day. And he's like, if you've got some hiking left in you, we can hike another five miles to the chimneys. And he's like, I know a spot there that you won't be disappointed. We certainly were not. Um, holy smokes. So the, uh, this, this campsite in the chimneys uh, has 360 degree views. Uh, so you can see the gorge uh, to the west. You can see Charlotte to, to the east. Um, it was just, you know, you just sit there and you just take it in. And I'm not a very poetic person when it comes to words. Uh, I'm usually kind of a knuckle dragger. And so I, I literally, it, my brother made fun of me because I would, the entire trip, I was like, I just have no words for this. <laughs> but Well, that's where I saw those emotions on your video because I was like, wow. I mean, it's really hard to capture on a video, I think, a pure emotional moment. And you did. I don't know how many times you turn that camera on and off or if you just <laughs> happen to catch it, but you did. You did. It was great. I well, mean, I kept, I watched that several times because I was like, is this, is he really, that's real. 
I mean, what a moment to, oh, you know, yeah. to really have that captured, you know, where you're looking at the gorge and you're kind of trying to talk about it and I can't, you can't. <laughs> I, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't. And there's a, there's a spot, there was a spot above our campsite um, that you kind of climb up to. I called it the tree house. Cause that's kind of what it felt like. Um, Cause there's, it wasn't terribly easy to get to, but you sit up there and you know, you can't, you can't see anybody else, you know, in, unless you just happen to peer over and see our campsite, but all you see is green and, you know, the exposed rocks of the gorge. And uh, even we were, uh, it was kind of overcast when we were up there. And so I thought, you know, I was hoping for like a sunset and, you know, and then again in the morning, a sunrise, even with the overcast um, skies, it was just breathtaking. You just sit there and you just look at it and you're just like, my gosh, you have to pitch yourself. Like, am I on the same planet as everybody else? Like, this is incredible. And, uh, but yeah, like you said, right here in North Carolina. You know, when I saw that video for the first time, I said, oh my God, how is he going to be on the John Muir Trail? Oh, yeah. That, that, I mean, <laughs> just like, I was trying to like, in my mind, visualize your emotion in the Linville Gorge. And then at that same moment, I was like, oh my God, how is he going to be? And and you have all your video footage is not out there yet for the JFT. And I am sure that emotion came out. I, I mean, I can't even, I'm, I, I, I have to, you, there must be a video of you crying on the John Muir Trail. It has to be because. I, I never filmed myself crying. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> no, the, uh, I know it's yeah. out there. I know it's within you, Austin. I know it. <laughs> no, the, the, the JMT scenery is just, it's a whole nother level. I mean, but again, I try, I try to film everything. And so. I remember vividly when we went um, uh, when we went up Forester Pass, which is the highest pass um, in the as you're going south. And I had thrown out my back that morning for no. I, I still don't really understand how it happened, but it was one of those just like, oh, I can't move, throwing out my back. Yeah. And uh, I my, my brother had to help me put my pack on, and I was just kind of hobbling up Forester Pass. And so you can even see. When I when I get up to the to the top and I'm just grimacing and I'm just like, here we are. We made it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some well, emotion that'll just in be there. normal, Austin, because most people are like, oh, my God, <laughs> yeah. how the heck did I get up here? So, all right. You get through the Linville Gorge. Did you have the expectation? Because once you continue hiking east, there's this patch of trail you go through that segment that is like you're just walking and swimming through water for like three or four miles. Oh, yeah. So, so the, you come down out of the gorge and then it's like swimming whole nation. So how was that? That was, so the Linville was, was a highlight in and of itself. Um, but then the, the Lost Cove Creek area and the Wilson Creek area um, were a highlight for a completely different reason. Um, just unbelievable beauty. But yeah, a lot of Creek crossings. So if you, if you go through that, that section, um, just plan on getting wet. <laughs> and don't do it in November when I did. Okay. Just don't do that. So funny story. Um, <laughs> back in 2018, um, my buddies and I were just getting into to backpacking and, and getting sort of serious about it. And so we ended up doing a loop. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the mountain just flew out of my head. But we did a loop trail, which included part of that section on uh, on the creek, and we did it in February. <laughs> so no dice. No oh dice. <laughs> man, it was uh, it was not the smooth sailing that you saw on the on the MST segment for. Uh, it's videos. not a summertime. I'm burning up. Let oh, me go ahead and get in this. Gosh, water. it was it was a little on the chilly side, but. Uh, <laughs> But you got some tremendous footage. I mean, it, you know, well, that's what's swimming all, and yeah. Yeah, that's all that matters anyway, right? Just I footage. was like, I want to be there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's that's definitely one of my favorite sections um, because the Lost Cove Creek area is a, is an area that that we've gone just because it's a beautiful area. It's not because we're trying to make miles or walk through it or anything like that. So a lot of the places that we went on that particular day. Um, Huntfish Falls and Gragprong Falls and Harper Creek Falls were all places that I'd been before 
just to visit those specific spots because they're so beautiful. And so it was, it was, it was really neat to kind of see some familiar, some, uh, familiar territory. Um, but then also to be able to walk through it and, and keep going and see where the trail went. Um, cause we'd always limited ourselves to that area. So it was, it was neat to walk into it, through it, and then walk right back out of it. Um, just to kind of see how it all connected with everything around it, which was neat. That's awesome. You could every section hike I've ever been on, you know, you, you stop, you know, at a certain point and you're like, dang, I just want to keep going because you do want to see, you know, that next segment or that next section of what you're going to be doing. But that gives you the anticipation of next time. So right. segment five for you next time, right? Yes, for sure. Well, actually, so we, I, we skipped segment three because we wanted to do segment four as a prep hike. So we got to go back to segment three and then segment five. And I'm actually really segment five. Yeah. So I'm actually really excited about segment five because uh, Mark said that that's his favorite segment. So that's saying a lot because he does a ton of hiking. So the fact that he likes it that much means that I'm definitely going to look forward to it. Well, you don't have to take as much time as I did going through there two weeks, but uh, (laughs) I had the best time in segment five. I love watching your videos. I ate a lot. I stayed at all the campgrounds. <laughs> it was it was awesome. It was great. Um, I had just had this little procedure done on my foot, so I couldn't go but a certain amount of miles a day. The doctor was like, well, don't do too much. And I'm like, well, what is your too much versus my too much? <laughs> like, we got to talk about this. Doc, you understand what my plans are, right? Like, we yeah. got to make this work. <laughs> I'm going to the trail. You know, well, don't overdo it. Okay. Well, eight miles doesn't seem like I'm overdoing it. That sounds good. But um, so, yeah, so you have a lot to look forward to on that. Okay, so you complete segment four. um, You've gone through the gorge. You've checked out your gear. You got your trail, Dave. Uh, We know what food. We don't want to be around (laughs) you when you're eating. So is there anything you changed before you went to the JMT because of your shakedown hike? The only thing that I really had to upgrade at that point was just getting a new pair of shoes. Um, I'd been, uh, sporting the ultra Olympus threes and I'd had them for over a year and, uh, what? that's yeah. too long, Austin. Yeah. What are you doing? Well, I'm cheap <laughs> when you, when you spend 150 to $180 on shoes, like, yeah. So I was like, I need, I need new shoes if I'm going to be hiking the JMT. So I got a pair of Olympus fours, which I absolutely love. Um, not one blister, the entire JMT. Um, so that was good. And then uh, the other thing that I changed, um, was for the longest time I've worn liner socks, um, underneath my, uh, regular socks to cut down on, on blisters. And I got some, not bad blisters, but I got blisters on the segment four trip. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try not wearing liner socks and see what happens, you know? And uh, so I started the JMT. I had a, a pair of liner socks in my pack in case I decided I needed them. But I made it through the entire thing with uh, without liner socks, no blisters. So I was like, so I guess that's a win. That is awesome. Hey, yeah. maybe the liner socks, maybe your feet were getting too hot. Yeah, who knows? Uh, I, yeah, I, who knows? But but it worked. So those the so my feet, those were the only things that I needed to change. But But as far as like general gear... Um, all the electronic setups and everything like that, everything seemed to work. So I was like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, (laughs) don't fix it. So now we transition over to everybody in the world, everybody who listens to this knows what happened to me on the JMT. And, you know, I'm very thankful and grateful for my 40 miles that I was able to do. Um, Phenomenal. Um, Went over my first pass, Donahue Pass. And I mean, that's just you still hiking. Got, you still got to see some great stuff, though. Uh, some awesome stuff. It's just hiking that's not on the East Coast, period. Yeah. So to even be able to, you know, get a get a taste of the Sierras um, was absolutely wonderful. But you guys, Austin has a different story. So Austin started where we did in Lyle Canyon or yeah, Lyle Canyon, yep. right? Lyle Canyon. We I've still- almost I've already forgot right there at um, <laughs> Tuolumne Meadows. Yep. And had a phenomenal three weeks out there, was able to summit Mount Whitney. Congratulations, Austin, you, you and your brother. Thank you. And, you know, in a nutshell, because spoiler here, Austin's going to be coming back for some more episodes. If you can, in a nutshell, tell us about the JMT. That's a big question. 
and you're smiling because there's, it's probably impossible. Well, there's really Imp- not much to tell. <laughs> 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 no, I, I think that, um, I mean, the JMT is just, it's a whole new level of, of scenery. Um, you know, everybody that, you know, I've at this point put out two videos um, and everybody's like, oh, it's just so beautiful. Oh, this is the greatest video in the world. And I'm like, the, my, the video, as far as like what I contribute to it, I don't think is really that great. It's what's in the background. It's what's in the footage um, that makes it great. In my opinion, it's just you can point a camera in any direction in that area and it's going to be beautiful. And, so true. And the other thing that I tell people is that there is no camera in the world that can truly capture what it's like being out there in person. Um, that just, you know, just standing there and, you know, I would, I would do like, try to do like 360 degree pans and, and try to try to capture sounds as much as possible. Um, but there's just nothing like standing out there in those vast expanses and looking out for, you know, miles and miles and miles. Um, it's just nothing like it. And there's nothing that can capture that. And, it was the most challenging and most rewarding uh, experience that we had. I mean, and we went from, you know, it's funny when we started in Tuolumne Meadows and uh, you may even remember it. So there's the, a hill that goes up into the campers or into the backpackers campground Oh yeah, right next mm-hmm. to the amphitheater. And so we're walking up that we had just gotten off the bus. We're walking up to go find a campsite and we get to the top and we're huffing and puffing. And I'm like, that was just a little tiny hill. Oh like, yeah. I was I already out of breath. I like, oh my God. I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> I mean, I almost turned around and just went back to the campground. <laughs> but, um, you know, that was, that was kind of the X factor for my brother and I is, you know, we, we try to be as uh, in good shape as possible um, because I'm one of those people. I grew up in a, in a military culture that quitting just wasn't in the vocabulary. And so I told my brother, I was like, unless there's a bone poking out of my leg, I'm going fin- <laughs> to, I'm going to finish this trail one way or the other. And, uh, but I was really worried about how the altitude was going to affect us because, um, you know, there are people, uh, I want to say it's his last name is Zaleski. You know, whoever the, the founder of, um, z is, you know, if you watch that movie Highline, the founder of z had to pull off trail early because of altitude sickness. Yeah. And I'm like, there's a guy that's clearly in better shape than I am much better hiker, much more experienced hiker. And he's having a hard time with it on the Uinta. And, uh, so that was, it was really worrying me. Um, we were fortunate that it didn't affect us like that. Um, but the JMT, I, it's just, I, I like to think that it was an amazing experience, but it also showed me that I'm definitely a section hiker at heart because when we were getting, you know, we summited Whitney, um, and we were actually, how was, was summiting Whitney? Uh, you gotta tell me, it was, you gotta tell me what I missed. Absolutely frightening. Um, <laughs> I was, oh, well, well, I wasn't <laughs> expecting that. <laughs> so we we decided to do the uh, go for the sunrise summit. Okay. So um, I woke up at midnight. Um, Joe was right after me, and then we stepped off um, at about one forty five in the morning. And so we're night hiking up to Whitney, and up to up to Trail Crest. Um, it was relatively straightforward trail hiking. You know, it was challenging, um, but I didn't feel like I was going to die. <laughs> but once we, once we, uh, we got to trail crest, um, uh, we dropped our bear cans, um, and then hiked the rest of the way up the, the trail gets very, very technical, um, up to the summit. Um, and I, you know, we're, you know, it's, it's literally the middle of the night, you know, it's like three or four in the morning. What do you mean by technical? Like some, you, you know, you like, need all four limbs kind oh yeah, of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, rock scrambling and that kind of thing. And it's, it's a lot more nerve wracking when you can't see what's immediately to your left or right. Um, and so I would be clinging to this rock because all I see to my left is this black void of nothing. Yeah, it's not good. And so I'm like, if I, you know, I've still got a pack on I've, and I've, I had, um, I had my trekking pole. So it's not like I had free hands. And so I was just clinging to these rocks for dear life. <laughs> and, uh, 
you know, and it's getting super cold. Um, even when, you know, even with, you know, the exertion, you know, we were still getting cold. It was still up in, in the, the mid thirties. And, um, uh, I was, I was getting angry, uh, at the trail <laughs> towards the end. And my brother's like, kind of half laughing at me because I was just, you know, back there. <laughs> <laughs> but we made it, we made it. Um, and then, but we got up there, uh, we got to the summit and it was still pitch black. And, you know, so we we're just kind of, you know, the night hike, and it's really my first ever real night hike. And so we were walking up, walking up, you know, into this black void. And then all of a sudden there's that hut. Um, and we're like, well, son of a gun, here we are. And, uh, but then we sat up there for probably another hour because we had gotten up there too early and uh, just freezing our tails off. <laughs> but but it was worth were it. more people coming at that time i mean did, could you see more people coming or were you guys kind of up there or we were up there by yourselves we it was um us and then another guy that we had met on the trail um who's actually a high school teacher in fresno but um it was three of us that were the first ones up that morning and then about 30 minutes later you know i think three other people showed up but for a while it was just the handful of us up there, uh, which was really cool. Um, but then as we started coming down, it was just this mass of people coming up the trail. So I'm sure it got a lot more crowded up there, um, you know, around seven or eight. But uh, and then as we made our way down to Whitney Portal that day, it was just a this steady stream of hikers hike, hiking up, you know, the opposite direction. So it's definitely I've heard it's tough going down, too. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we had actually planned on making it a two day hike from the summit down to Whitney Portal um, just because it's it's a six thousand foot descent. Um, and that's. I mean, to put it in perspective, that's about the height of Klingman's Dome <laughs> above sea level. So you're doing that entire <laughs> descent um, all at once. And so we had we had originally intended to um, break it up into two days. And uh, this goes back to my original point, how it proved that I'm definitely a section hiker at heart. Yeah, I interrupted you on that. So <laughs> no, sorry about that. No. Going back to section hiker at heart here. We were, we were the, the short answer is, didn't regret one minute, uh, enjoyed every minute, but we were ready to be done. And so yeah. we, we got down to where we had planned to camp and it was like nine o'clock, you know, at that point we'd been hiking for about, wow. about eight hours. And, uh, we're like Joe and I, it was funny how things happen. You know, it's just like you and Steve, you know, you, you're on the same wavelength and you're making the same decision in your head. You just haven't talked about it yet. Yeah. And we got down there and we looked at each other and we're just like, what do you think about just, just going? Just let's just finish it today. And so that's what we did. And the only thing that like kept me going, because 6,000 feet down at once sucks a whole lot. <laughs> but that, uh, yes, the burger. And like I said, I've heard that is hard, yeah. hard hiking down. Yeah, it was it was not the it wasn't as technical uh, or as life threatening as I thought. Um Mountain, and I think you're just tired there. too oh, at yeah. that point. Well, yeah. we I mean, we've been up since midnight. So, I mean, we'd been, we hiked for us almost 12 hours that day. Um, and then we're up for, you know, the rest of the day, but we were just ready to be done. <laughs> we were, we were ready to have some real food. We were ready to sleep in a bed. Um, and that's, that day was what helped me understand that I don't need to go through hike the AT or the PCT or CDT. Like three weeks is my limit. That's, that's, you know, and that's still a long time, but, um, but three I'm just, weeks is a long time, <laughs> yeah, but I'm just not a through hiker. I learned that I was out there for a week and I thought I was out there for six months. I mean, it was, it's just, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a, you know, traveling from the East coast to the West coast and, you know, all that stuff that goes on even to get there. Oh my gosh. You yeah. know, builds into being tired and things like that. And I didn't even go into canceled flight before we got oh. there and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It, crazy. But, uh, well, Austin, congratulations 100% on completing the JMT. Well, I mean, I, 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 I think that's awesome. And for reaching out to Steve and I, when you guys, you know, were in Lone Pine, you know, trying to help us get to, uh, Reno and, um, I think really, really appreciate that. Absolutely. I think that 
only people that go through the ring of a roll of prepping for a JMT hike really understand the emotions and what's at stake. And so yeah. uh, we had, we were hanging out in, in uh, Lone Pine that day and, you know, I, I got the little alert, you know, Hey, they're live on Facebook. So I'm, you know, I'm commenting. I'm just like, Oh, great. They've made it to reds. And then you guys started announcing that you were pulling off trail. And I, my heart just sank for you. Cause I know what that meant. And I was just like, Oh no. And I was like, what, what can I do? And it just happened to be that we were going to be driving past mammoth the next day with our, you know, we had, we had contracted a, a shuttle driver to take us to Reno. And I was like, well, you know, I might have to hang out on the, on the roof, you know, and, but, but we'll make it work. If, and so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm super glad that you guys were able to get a ride um, and you didn't have to wait for us, but, but no, my heart went out to y'all and, and I wanted, we wanted to help in any way we could. Cause I know that that's not what you had planned to be doing. So. No, but you know, in a weird way, because I've never felt this about something I haven't accomplished. I'm okay. It's weird. It's a good normally I'm like already starting to plan, like, okay, how am I going to tackle this? What am I going to do better next time? You know, this, that, and the other. And I don't know what's different this time, but I'm okay. I mean, I'm sure I'll try to go. Yeah. I'm sure I'll go try to tackle it again sometime or another. I don't know when, but yeah, I'm okay. That's great. That just, that just means you made the right decision. You've, you know, I, I know that probably wasn't an easy one and we could, I would love to be able to talk more about it if you're willing, but yeah. Uh, and you know, the thing is, it's like, you, you know, typically I would have just been upset and mad and jealous. I would have been like, well, Austin finished it. <laughs> that would have made me mad. Or, you know, I'd have been like, dang it, everybody that finishes now I'm jealous and all that kind of stuff. And I don't know. I think you're right. I think I just, we just made the right decision and no regrets and i am totally okay and it's even weird it's weird for me <laughs> yeah because i i don't know uh my girlfriends that were there with us they they continued on and you know we have this thing like we're completist you know mm -hmm. what we set out like you you know mm -hmm. what you set out to do and you know i've even heard somebody use the term you know like we'll just go over razor blades to finish you know what we said <laughs> we were going to start doing and it just it wasn't that way. And it's weird. And I don't even know how to explain it. So yeah, it's, <laughs> I, I really like that term. I'm going to have to write that down. Completists because that Completist, is 100% yes. correct. And this yeah. is probably a podcast in and of itself talking about, it is. about pulling trips early, but, but I yeah. like that. I'm going to remember that the completist because <laughs> that's definitely who I am. Yes. Yes. And I'm like, people think I'm not a completist people that are whatever, whatever. And you know, at one point, you know, Steve and I, right before we were talking about going live, I was like, God, now we have to, we've put everything out. That's the thing about kind of being out there, you know, mm -hmm. having a podcast, you know, yourself having a YouTube channel, like making an announcement. This is what I'm going to do. You know, you build this story up to it. And then if it doesn't work out right, you're like, oh my God, now I have to like mm -hmm. tell the story of why it didn't work out right. But Going on Facebook Live was the best decision we ever made because we just got it out there. Rip that band. I, I felt so much better. And I, Steve's like, well, we don't have to do anything. And I'm like, come on, Steve, we've built these, you know, these stories. You know, at least we could say, hey, we're off the trail. But that was the best thing we did for both of us. Probably so, very therapeutic just just to be able to to say it out loud. <laughs> Nothing else. It was because, yeah. I mean, prior to that, I was crying and crying. I mean, I, I mean, but I had gotten a lot of crying out before you know, we decided to do that. So yeah. after that, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm done crying. I'm like, <laughs> it's, it's a done deal. It's we're on the bus. We're, go we're off the bus. We're going down to Mammoth Lakes. We're done. So anyway, yes, we will continue that. And again, congratulations. Uh, congratulations you. on segment four. And I know probably in your mind right now, you're like, okay, when can I get back out on the MST <laughs> for segment three? And uh, you and I, I guess we'll end this episode. So Austin has agreed to join me in my, I don't know what I'm going to call it, in my venture to have um, a few co-hosts. And Austin is going to join me for an episode in October, an episode in November, and an episode in December. 
where he and I are going to co-host the podcast together. Yeah. So thank you, Austin. Don't thank me yet. We'll see how these podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how the first one goes. You may not be thanking okay. me at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I won't thank you for that yet, but I will thank you again for coming on the episode. And I know I didn't ask you to prepare for anything and you're going to be back uh, mid October, but is there anything you want to leave the listeners with? Hmm. Don't be, I, know, I caught you off guard. Don't be afraid to pull the plug if you need to, since we're, that's what we we're just talking about. Um, cause that's, that's been something that's occupied my mind, um, since watching you and Steve. Um, but it was something that, that I have thought about even before that. And, um, something I have tried to wrap my head around to even make a video about, uh, cause we dealt with the, the, the same thing, um, when we did our kayaking trip in Missouri on the current river, um, and making that hard choice, uh, recognizing that either the elements are against you or, you're outside of um, your safety zone. Um, don't be afraid to pull the plug. It is not the end of the world. And you got, for me personally, uh, fighting that completest attitude because um, because it can be a dangerous thing if you ignore it. So, so yeah, that's my shooting from the hip parting parting thought. And you know what? I think in October, we're going to pick right back up here. So, right all right, you guys, you know where we're going to pick back up. Thanks, Austin. Appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me. Thanks again, Austin, for joining me on the podcast and sharing with all of us your side trail adventures. You all can follow Austin on all the social media sites, including YouTube, by searching for side trail adventures. And yes, it's true. Austin will be back in October, November, and December for one episode each of those months as a co-host. And Austin is not the only person joining me as a co-host. Carissa Hip will be joining me also as a co-host for one episode in October, one in November, and one in December. Carissa, if you remember, was on episode number 44 with her daughter, Hiking with Pigtails. More to come on this co-hosting venture of mine starting mid-October. As always, you can go to the hikingradionetwork.com and click on the Jester Section Hiker Show to find all of today's show notes, pictures, and links mentioned in this episode. If you find value in what we do here at the network, please consider leaving us a donation by clicking on any one of the donate buttons found on our website. Thanks for listening, everybody. Be safe out there and happy section hiking. I'm wondering if you'd go wandering with me Through the wilderness and woods To where the winds are blowing free Through the darkness of the night Heading toward the morning light I wonder if you'd wander with me And I'll spread the word We'll round up the troops and get the gang to come And we'll leave the streets and these neighborhoods Head over the river and through the woods You're wondering if I go wandering with you What kind of trouble We'll get ourselves into Would it be wrong to tag along With a band of vagabonds You wonder if I'd wander with you So I'll spread the word And you beat the drum We'll round up the troops And get the gang to come And we'll leave the streets And these neighborhoods I'm wondering if you'd come wandering my way 
If you ever get lost or if the trail leads you astray, the music of the pack can always bring you back. I wonder, can we wander away? And I'll spread the word and you beat the drum. Round up the troops and get the gang to come. Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo's savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So, what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com backslash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. 